Okay, cool. Welcome to uh, the final or one of the final, um, no, the, the final, one of the final presentations for uh, the AUC DevWorld this year, which is kind of sad. It's always hard going last because you don't really get to concentrate or you, don't, you have to concentrate like uh, during the dinner last night, you know, you kind of can't really drink too much. You've got to make sure. I think I was in my hotel just seeing where I could add any more Anvil animations uh, just to make it perfect. But um, no, I think it's going to be fun. So I'm going to try and make this as interactive as possible so we can do a bit of coding together. We can kind of go out of it or, or uh, come out with a, an application each, at least that we can run on our simulator and actually interact with each other next to us. So if you don't know the people sitting next to you now, you will by the end of this. So um, my name is Zachary Fitzwalter. I'm from the Queensland University of Technology. And just a little bit of a, a brief background about myself. I'm from the Mobile Innovation Lab, which is an innovation lab which we started last year uh, in Queensland, uh, Uni of Technology. And basically, the Mobile Innovation Lab uh, does research based around using mobile devices in novel ways in a couple of different areas. So we look at things like uh, education, uh, public transport. Jimmy's working on public transport. And Tony's working on context-aware mobile devices. So we've got Tony and Jimmy here. You may have seen their talks earlier uh, today. Um, but yes, they're both from the Mobile Innovation Lab, as well as Anthony, who was yesterday presenting on Core Data. Um, you can check out our website there. Uh, but in particular, myself, I'm a PhD student uh, at the Mobile Innovation Lab. And uh, my, my PhD is currently based around looking at games and looking at mobile devices and how we can merge the two together, and in, particular, in particularly focusing on how we can use games to engage people with everyday activities. Um, there is this word called gamification. I don't really like using it, but uh, it's, it's a good way to kind of describe what it's about really at the moment. So at the start of this year, I did a case study on uh, university orientation. And I was looking at how we could use mobile devices, and in particular, the iPhone, in order to engage students at university to explore the campus, to find out services and locations based on uh, the campus, and also to meet new people, because it's kind of hard for new students to meet other people who uh, they are kind of similar to or interested in. And um, this is what prompted me to look for a way in which to allow students to easily transfer contact details to each other. And so usually when we uh, add uh, a person, uh, or when we meet someone for the first time, business cards are dead. I don't know, does anyone still use business cards? OK, well, yeah, business cards aren't yet dead, but uh, they will be soon in the future, uh, I think, anyway. But generally, when we meet someone, we might say, OK, cool, uh, I've met you, I like you, you're OK, can I grab your contact details? And a lot of people will bring up uh, the new contact form in the address book uh, in your iPhone device or iOS device. And from here, you can then uh, add first name, last name. And if they're really nice, they'll let you take a photo of them. But sometimes that's uh, kind of a little bit awkward. And you can add things like you know, mobile, uh, the home email, ringtone, special ringtone, et cetera, details about that person. But when you go to a conference or when you go to a university orientation, uh, university orientation event, it becomes a bit of a pain if you're meeting a lot of people and you have to keep adding new contacts every single time. So you, know, you can kind of go up to a person, you keep adding it. it you realize it's quite a tedious, uh, a tedious interaction or quite a tedious process adding these people every single time. There are other ways you can get around adding people. Uh, so you could, for example, create a contact for yourself, and then you could enter all your details. And then you could send that to someone via email and MMS. However, if you're on Vodafone, MMS doesn't work too well. Or if you're uh, you know, sending it to an email, my mom doesn't have email, so I can't give her my contact details, which may be a bonus. But no, I, I, love, I love my mom. Uh, but yes, there are other ways to get around it. So this led me to do a little bit of an exploration into seeing how I could transfer contact details in a new and kind of different way. And from this, I found the Bump application and the Bump API. And so this API basically allows you to connect two phones together by physically bumping them. So kind of like a fist bump. So everyone knows how to do a fist bump. You get your fist, you get someone else's fist, and you kind of bump it together. And it's really cool. It feels, it feels excellent. So, the idea of bump is that uh, you all know what I'm talking about. You know, and then you can do the explosion. It doesn't do the explosion, but someone could build an app to make it do the explosion. Uh, but yes, so I found the bump API. And this was exciting because it allowed, you, it, it allowed kind of a novel way in which to send information from one iPhone to the other. And it's quite tangible, and it's quite interactive in the sense that you know, it, it's kind of a nice feeling bumping from one to the other. So it's also much faster than uh, 
adding an individual contact via your address book. And I'm willing to put this to the test just quickly. So I've got a copy of Bump. Has, who has Bump on their iPhones? Excellent. So a few people, if you shouldn't, shame on you, turning up to a Bump app. No, no, it's okay. It's a, it's a free application. But Elliot, I'm just going to just quickly, we're just going to do a little bit of a competition. I've got Jimmy and Tony. Can you add each other via your contact details? Yep. Hopefully this works. So just in your address book, add each other. And Elliot and I, I swear I didn't prepare this earlier. This is uh, completely on the fly. So Elliot's got Bump application on his, uh, on his phone. And I've got the Bump application. I'll pull it open. If you haven't seen it, you can't really see it from this far away. But basically, it's got two little hands, and they're bumping together. And you can share some kind of information. OK, does someone want to give us a countdown? We're going we're gonna to race and see how quickly we can transfer our contact details. So that means you've got to transfer name. Mobile address, uh, email address, website, uh, take a photo as well of each other, and uh, then we can see how we go. Okay, cool. Does someone want to give us a countdown? Neil. Uh, two, one, go. Okay. Uh, okay, so we've connected. Oh, no, we need to no, bump again. No. <laughs> nope, okay, wait. We'll get it. It's a little bit, uh, it's a little bit, uh, okay, wait. Excellent. I say connect with Elliot Wilson and bam, I've got his contact information. How are you guys going over there? <laughs> Saving photos? Saving photos. Oh, yeah, Tony. What about a mobile? What's your number? 0412345689. Doesn't sound like a real mobile. That's okay. We get, we, you guys can, yeah. I've got some great prizes for you guys as well. Some, uh, there's a microphone and uh, some jelly beans and. Uh, <laughs> Um, yes, so you can see, okay, I just wanted to kind of give a demonstration. So it's basically Ellie and I just kind of bumped phones together. You do have to set up your contact information that you want to share with someone else, but basically that's it. So you can then go around to anyone who has the Bump app and you can bump phones together and share things like uh, your contact information, your Facebook uh, details, credit card details, no, not credit card, but uh, you know, any kind of information that you want to share with each other. You can do it with iPads, yes. And I'm still waiting for a way to do it because these things have an, ex I'll show you how it works in a second, but these things have an accelerometer inside them as well. So it'd be fun to kind of do it with MacBooks, <laughs> wouldn't it? You're kind of bumping them together. Uh, cool, so over the next 30 minutes or so, I'm gonna give you a brief introduction to Bump, what exactly it is, what you can do with it, and how it actually works. And then we're gonna, uh, we're gonna whip out our, our MacBooks and MacBook Pros and uh, whatever other devices we have. And we're going to run through an example application together called Scissors Paper Bump. Um, so you can kind of guess what the title is gonna be. Uh, and I'm gonna run you through just a quick how-to guide to implementing the Bump API into your application. So you can basically see what methods are required to just get it up and running. There's not too many, which is fantastic. And just how easy it is to actually add the Bump API to your application. Great. So the idea for Bump was conceived by a guy named David Lieb. He was a former employee of Texas Instruments, and he was doing his master's in business. And he basically, he didn't like the idea of the business card. He thought it was tedious, and he thought there was a better way in which to transfer information from one person to the other. And so he had an iPhone, and he's like, oh, you know, we could possibly use this. But uh, the issue with this, this kind of idea of thinking is, is transferring contact details to another person you run into issues on a, on a hardware level. So we have these really powerful devices at our fingertips. We've got these iPhone 4s that have got you know, amazing hardware inside them. But then getting them to actually talk to each other can be a bit of a pain programmatically. And when we bring in other devices, say, that are running the same operating system, uh, we have you know, potential issues where we need to add more code for that kind of particular device. And then when we have other devices which are running completely different hardware and completely different operating systems, you know, just implementing a way for, to get these devices to talk to each other that is intuitive and clear, and so you're not having to send an email to the other person standing right beside you, and you're not having to just SMS them information and stuff like that. It, it can be quite difficult. So the idea for Bump was conceived. And Bump, basically, instead of working on the hardware level, it works on the software level. So what they've done is they've created this application, and they've set up servers. And basically, all the kind of Bump information goes through these servers. So all connections are made, and all data transfers go through Bump servers. And so it works on a software level rather than a hardware level. And what this means is you've got this cross-compatibility across um, different devices. So you can in implement Bump on your Android phone and on your iPhone phone, uh, iPhone, iPhone phone, and on your iPhone, and you can actually bump them together. So I could have an Android and iPhone bump them together, and as long as they know what data they're receiving, they can actually talk to each other which is kind of cool. 
Now, when we talk about bump, there's two different, uh, two different uh, sides to it. And the first side is the bump application, which I mentioned before, which you can kind of download and you can use to bump uh, and send information to uh, other people. So this is for users. You can uh, obtain it freely off the App Store. And you can basically download it, start using it now, where you share things like contacts, your photos between people. You can share apps that you like, music that you like as well, calendar events, and social networks. So that's all kind of cool. You've got this app which you can use uh, to share that kind of information. But then for us, for developers, we have the Bump iOS API uh, currently at version 2. And now this is really cool because this means that as developers, you can actually add the Bump API to your applications and actually implement Bump uh, kind of technology into that. So a quick couple of examples of applications that use uh, Bump API on the App Store include the PayPal app. So this recently uh, released, uh, they recently released a version which had Bump technology inside it. And what this allows people to do is that if you have any friends who owe you money, I think I've got a guy still from grade 12 who owes me about 50 bucks. So I need to, I need to find him and take a, either Sledgehammer and a Bump application or this paper. No, I wouldn't do a Sledgehammer or anything like that. Some kind of sword would be better, I think. Uh, but uh, the PayPal app. So basically, this allows you, if you've got someone next to you, say you go out for dinner, for example, and they pay for the meal, and then you want to transfer money to them, you can basically pull out your, your PayPal application and as long as you both have it, you can then transfer money to each other using it, which is kind of cool. There's also this one here, which is the Sticky Notes Pro application, um, which basically you can create sticky notes. Uh, you can have to-do lists, etc., things like that. And by bumping phones together, you can share them between the applications. Now, uh, the Bump API is actually really good for local multiplayer gaming as well. So in particular, turn-based gaming. It's not so good for real-time uh, lo local gaming, but... Uh, being able to trans, just because of the, the amount of chunks of data that you can send are, are relatively quite small. Um, but for things like Connect4, uh, so this is an application available on the App Store by Bump Technologies. And basically it shows you how you can use uh, Bump to begin a local game with someone else who's running the same application and then transfer moves over an extended session. And so that's kind of cool. And now there are other apps out there, which is other, other examples of applications. I think there is a, a fart application, unfortunately. Well, the remote prank sounds application is what it's called, where you can bump phones together, put one phone somewhere and stand back and, and kind of giggle as you make fart noises, which is, uh, you know, I think it's an obligatory app on, for any kind of version of, of smartphones these days. And if you head to the blog, uh, the bump blog, they've actually got a wish list set up of apps they'd like to see that use the Bump API. And so they list things off like, for example, uh, dating applications. So you could bump phones together with someone that you've met and you can see how compatible they are, you know, whether they like World of Warcraft and whether they, uh, you know, iOS developers and things like that. So you can kind of get a 0% or an 85% uh, kind of compatibility between you two. Social games, so for creating social games, for group and party games, I think that would be kind of fun, having some kind of party game when you need to go around and find certain people bumping things together. Also for cloud and file sharing, virtual goods, and music discovery. So there's a whole lot of different ways. It's not kind of limited to just transferring contact information. You can kind of transfer really anything that you can archive in an NS data um, object. So yeah, it's, it's basically open to a lot of different things. And what they've recently released is also information on this bump cube. So they've come up with this, this idea that maybe we can also embed this bump technology, not in just uh, phones themselves, but also in physical devices at particular locations. So you can't develop for this one yet, but they're building these, basically. Uh, and the idea behind them is that you put them at a particular business. So you could stick them at a restaurant, for example, and you could then go and bump this cube. So if, you're, if I'm a patron um, and I'm visiting a restaurant and I want to see the upcoming events or I want a copy of the menu so I can order later at another time, or uh, I can see, you know, sign up for their newsletter, for example. I could actually physically bump this device at uh, this, this venue, which is kind of cool. And they've set up, they've got a couple of examples on their website and, uh, of using the bump cube. I think one is for ping pong, so they can uh, track their ping pong games and who's winning. And another one is for pouring beer, so you, you bump it and it pours you a glass of beer and it adds how many you've drunk to the scoreboard. So I don't know if that's encouraging or decouraging. Uh, you know, not encouraging uh, drinking. But yes, it, it opens up to heaps of different opportunities and possibilities. Now, how does Bump work? Uh, it's interesting. A lot of people think that it actually connects via Bluetooth or via Wi-Fi or something like that. But it's all done uh, in a completely different way where it connects to a remote server and then it works out when a bump uh, occurred. So there's three parts to every bump. 
uh, that happens. And the first one is the actual bump. So you can see when Ellie and I walked up to each other, we bumped phones together. It registered that we bumped and then could match us up. So the bump basically works by using the sensors inside these smartphones. So most smartphones these days have an accelerometer, and the accelerometer can pick up some kind of movement. And so you don't actually have to physically bump phones together. You can kind of shake it as well, and it still does the same thing. But basically, it uses this accelerometer to pick up when the, the iPhone or, or device has been moved and, and shaken and you know, almost bumped. So it takes that data. It says, OK, a bump occurred here. It takes your location data, and it takes a timestamp. And then it sends it to the bump server and tries to match you with someone else somewhere around the world. And so by using that information, time, and location, it can therefore say, oh, yeah, right, this person has bumped just at this particular point in this particular location. And then it can work out where a match uh, or where a bump has occurred, and it can match up these two people. Now, it's interesting. A lot of people say, but what if, you know, what if four people bump at exactly the same time in exactly the same location? What happens then? And that's a good question. It, it still manages to, to connect you together um, somehow based off the, the timestamp. So using the information, it's quite, uh, it's quite accurate in, in the way it is actually able to me measure this bump. So it's kind of cool. Even though you might have multiple people using Bump app, for example, at, at a conference or something, it still manages to, to match you up together. So once that's done, it then connects you via the server, and it, it allows you to transfer information. So this is how it works, or this is why you can use it over multiple different hardware platforms and also different operating systems, so because it's all done on the software level. Cool. So the advantages of the Bump API, which we're going to be looking at, is that it's super easy to integrate with your application. So just with a couple of lines of code, uh, well, maybe a few more lines than a couple, but just with some amount of coding, you can actually easily integrate it into your application. Uh, it's not hardware specific, so this means it's compa compatible with, dare I say, Android apps. I don't know how many of you are Android developers, but if you're looking to you know, publish an app on multiple different platforms, you can still have this connectivity between the two, which is kind of cool. And also, it's, it's fun and easy to use. So you, know, like, you can see how much fun we were having when we bumped phones together. A lot of people actually like it, and a lot of the feedback I got from my user study at the start of the year was that people enjoyed the actual act of bumping phones together because it was quite physical. It meant they were interacting and connecting with people, which was kind of fun. But the disadvantage is that without connectivity, you, you can't bump. So if you don't have Wi-Fi or 3G connectivity, um, you can't actually connect to the server, and therefore you can't use Bump. So this is an issue on some iPods, for example, if you don't have access to iPod Touches, if you don't have access to a 3G network, obviously, and there's no Wi-Fi network around, then you can't actually use Bump. And so for that, you can kind of build in a fail, build in a fail safe or something else like that. Great, enough talk. Let's Bump. So. What I want to do now is run through an application. I want you guys to kind of develop it with me. I've, has everyone got uh, MacBooks running Xcode, some kind of version of Xcode? If you don't, do you want to pair up and sit next to someone who does? Or you can work through this together. We can you know, kind of get through and, and have a bit of an adventure. But basically, what we're going to be doing is we're going to be recreating uh, an old classic hand game and sprucing it up for iPhone users. So everyone's familiar with Scissors, Paper, Rock? Oh. Oh, OK. Uh, what, about rock, what about scissors, paper, rock, lizard, Spock? <laughs> That's the one, yes, yeah, yeah. Um, we're going to be sprucing that one up. Uh, there are a couple of different versions. I've tried implementing rock, paper, scissors, lizard, Spock. Uh, that one it involves a little bit more. Uh, but it's, yeah, you could do that as well, it, anything. So seeing as hands always get in the way, especially if you're holding an iPhone and an iPad in one hand, we're going to create a, an iPhone application which allows you to simply uh, have a game of scissors, paper, rock with someone else. Great. So I've actually got a copy of the Xcode project there. So I know it can be difficult kind of typing and, and, and developing at the same time, especially with these chairs. So if you jump onto that website, uh, bit.ly forward slash dw11 bump, uh, you can download the Xcode project. If you're a bit of a code ninja, you can kind of code along uh, if you really want. Um, I've just got the slides coming up with the, the, the coding there, uh, and we'll work through it together. Uh, the project is quite small, but about 280K, but you'll also need the bump uh, API uh, that we, I mentioned at the start, uh, and also uh, your bump API key, which you can obtain via bu.mp forward slash API agree. Any questions so far? No, all good? OK, cool. So this is what we're going to be making. It is a very attractive looking application. Nice gray background and monochromatic theme. Uh, but what you can see there is it's basically an application which uh, you can make a choice down the bottom. So you can choose either scissors, paper, or rock. 
And then up the top you've got, uh, it counts your wins, how many wins you've had, how many draws you've had, and also how many losses you've had. Uh, in this particular version, you can see this button down here which says Sim Bump. And basically this simulates a bump. If you're using the simulator, uh, or if you're developing using the simulator on your Mac, you can actually simulate the bump because obviously you can't shake the MacBook. So uh, the cool thing about that is you can actually, if you're building or developing and you want to test out the application, you can have it running on your device and running on your simulator and you can bump them together. Uh, and in the middle there's just a label which uh, is going to basically give the user some, some feedback as to what's happening with their connection with the bump server. Great. I'll show you a quick demo. Um, I've got one here. So this is it running in the simulator. And I've got it running on my iPhone, which is oh, here. Cool. So can I get Tony, do you want to come and help me out? So I've got, uh, I've got one of the, a copy running on my uh, iPhone, which I've just published and built from my Xcode project. And I've got one running here in the simulator. And so as long as they're both connected to the Wi-Fi network here, now this is going to this is going to be interesting trying to bump at the same time. Do you want to count down? So what do I do? So we're basically versing. This is just a quick demo of the application we're going to build. So you can well, you, well, you, you can't look at mine. That's that's kind of cheating. Okay, we're good. And then if you bump at the same time, the sim bump. Okay, one, two, three. So we can see. You see the text label changes. It tells us that a session has been created. A match has been found, so we managed to match. And then it, it gives us the, the outcome. And it's a draw, even though you're cheating. I'm not cheating. You're not cheating? Oh, good. <laughs> cool. And so if it's a draw, say if I win this time. Okay, so one, two, three. So session started, and then you win. And so it, it gives you a little alert saying that you've won. And if I lose, one, two, three. You can see that uh, it tells you you lost. That doesn't rub it in too much. Cool. Thank you. So that's what we're going to quickly be creating uh, over the next 20 minutes or so. Um, OK, cool. So let me get this up and running again. Uh, OK, so just a quick overview of the application. It's called Scissors Paper Bump. The way it's going to work or the flow to it is that a person will open the application. They'll choose either scissors, paper, or rock using a segmented control. They'll bump phones with another person who has the same application running. And then using bump will transfer their choice. So they'll, they'll transfer whether they chose scissors, paper, or rock to the other application. So the winner is then decided using a bit of logic. And then an alert is showing telling the person if they have won, lost, or drawn. Finally, a score count updates either a win, draw, or loss label, which you saw at the top. Um, to help you out as well, so if you are coding along, um, I've created a quick tutorial, bit.ly forward slash bump shoot, where you can copy and paste the code as we go, just so, you know, to help with all the typing and things like that. So if you want to check out that, uh, it'll just take you to a website, and it just has the code listed there in the steps that we're going to be going through over the next 20 minutes. Great. So is everyone ready to code? Yeah? Sort of? Not really? Okay, good. So the first thing we want to do is we want to open up Xcode and we want to create a new view-based application. Uh, so create a new view-based application and give it the name something along the lines of Scissors Paper Bump. And once that's done, jump into the view controller header file. And we're just going to set up a number of properties uh, for the labels, uh, for the interface elements. So we've got three labels there. Uh, the first one is for the win, the number of wins that we've had. The second one there is for the number of draws. And the third one there is for the number of losses. And then we want to create another label called bump info. And basically, this is where we're going to be telling the, the user uh, information about the bump session that we've created. Then we want a UI segmented control, which the user can uh, you know, select a choice, either rock, paper, or scissors. And then we want to create also uh, a UI button called sim bump. And this is only going to appear when the simulator is running. And finally, we also need a method called sim bump pressed. And so that will hook up to the sim bump button so we can simulate the bump. Now, 
This is just setting up all the, the kind of stuff we'll need. We'll add the bump API just in a little bit, but we'll just basically set up the interface and the different elements like that. Oh, thank you. Yeah, cheers. Tony's just given me some kind of a stick that I can beat. Ooh, I broke it. Ooh. Oh, pointer. It's not, it's not for... Okay, cool. Thank you. Okay, so once we've done that, uh, we then want to head into the implementation file. And here we set up just a number of, uh, we define a number of values, uh, one for rock, one for scissors and paper, just to make it easier to code for it and test the logic. And then we also just want to synthesize those different properties. So we have wins, a label, draws label, losses label, bump info, choice, and sim bump. All good so far. I can hear typing, so that means someone's, someone's doing it, which is good. So once that's set up, we can then, what we want to do is create uh, three or four, four helper methods. Uh, no, sorry, three helper methods. And what these do are they just help with the bump application itself. So the first one is just displaying an alert view for us. So we can say when the person has won, lost, or drawn, and give the user some kind of feedback as to whether they're, or the outcome of the match. Then we've got a method which is increment score of label. And so this is just incrementing the different uh, labels depending on whether they won, lost, or draw. And finally, there's the sim bump pressed method there, which we declared in the header file. And just for the time being, if you just put the, uh, the bump, uh, as, yeah, just, just put um, nothing there for the time being, as we'll add this a little bit later. So just comment it out and put bump there, because this is where we'll be adding uh, a simulation of a bump once we've added the API. Cool. And then we just need to uh, release all those properties. So just in the DL. Right, then you'll jump into Interface Builder and set up the interface for this. So um, it's just as simple as adding six labels up the top. Uh, the top three have, uh, you know, a naught value in them and just outlining what, which one's the wins, which one's the draws, and which one's the losses. Then we want a bump, uh, the bump info label will go in the middle there. So create it quite large because we need to create a, a fair bit of text that goes in there. A sim bump button down in the, the bottom right and then finally the UI segment control in the bottom. And if you enter the value scissors, paper, rock there. It's quite simple. But now, um, the way Bump API works, I'll go through it in just a second. But what we're doing here is we're setting up our own custom user interface. So Bump does come with a default UI, which you can use for applications, um, in particular applications which you're going to be connecting to and sending data for a longer amount of time. But what we're doing here is we're creating a custom user interface. And basically, this is good for sending short, sharp uh, bits of information. Great. Then you obviously need to connect the atlas. So, you know, connect all those different uh, properties to their different labels and buttons. And then uh, you should get the bump API. So as I mentioned just at the start, if you head to bu.mp forward slash API agree, uh, you can download or sign up for the, the bump API there. And what you'll do is you just need to put in your, your name and your email, and then they'll send out uh, a, the API key to you and then also give you a link to download it. And so that's from that website there. Cool. Any questions so far? No, that's good. OK, great. So then what you want to do is you want to add the Bump API to your project. And so you can see here there's a number of different files. So once you unzip it, uh, it's quite a large API. Uh, the number of files in there, they're, they're quite large. But what we, what we have there is basically the bump api.h file, and that's for implementing or for handling the bump session that you've created with the default bump user interface. So if you're just setting up a regular default bump UI, you'll use that, that particular file. If you're the bump api assets.bundle there, basically that has all the, the default assets for the, the default user interface. So you have things like uh, sounds, so you can, there's a little bump sound that usually occurs, and you have a little animation as well that plays when you want to bump with someone else. So in that bundle file are those particular assets. Then the bump API custom UI.h, and this is for implementing a custom user interface like we're going to be doing. Uh, and then finally, the bumper.h file, uh, that contains information about the particular user, so the person who's using the application. This defaults to the name of the device, so whatever you've set your name to on your device, it will default to that. Otherwise, you can set it to something else. So you can give people player names or, or get their contact information, first name, last name. 
And this is just for confirming that you want to bump to a particular person. So you know who you're bumping with, and you can say yes or no. Cool. So you also need the following frameworks in order to use the bump API. So you need the audio toolbox in which to play the sound of the bump. You need the AV foundation in order to play the media, core location for getting location data, uh, quartz core for also a bit of animation, and the SQL Lite library. Uh, so you just need to add the frameworks via Xcode. So by clicking the project, you can then add the targets, scissors, paper, bump, uh, clicking on the target since paper bump, and then adding the frameworks there. So you'll need to do this. Uh, the, the project you downloaded from Xcode doesn't actually include these. Or maybe it does. No, it includes these frameworks, but you need to add the bump API. Cool. So just a quick overview of the bump API. There are two different types of bumps. So as of version 2.0 of the bump API when it was released, in, in the earlier version, you could only use the default UI. So this is the one on the left. And basically, this, this has a pop-up which shows uh, when you want to bump with someone else, and it comes up with the image of two fists bumping together and a uh, bump to connect, and then also an optional message underneath. So you can add something like, you know, bump with another person uh, to start. And so what this does, it looks a bit like this. This is the flow. So you want to bump with someone, you, you start up bump, it warms up, there's a little animation showing it's loading, and then it'll, it'll ask you to bump phones. It'll then connect, and then it'll ask you to confirm whether you want to bump with a particular person. Now, as of version two of the API, you can access uh, a custom UI, uh, and you can create your own user interfaces, basically, for bumps. So you don't have to use this default user interface. And this is really good if you want to remove, or the reason we're doing this today is because if you want to remove kind of some of that interaction or some of those steps which aren't necessary, for example, if you know you're going to connect with someone uh, automatically or you, know, you don't want a pop-up occurring, you can create your own custom user interface. And doing this is really good for short, sharp bursts of information that you're connecting. So if you're creating a game where you wanted to transfer over a longer session, you might use the default bump UI because it's a little bit more stable. But using something like this just to transfer information quite quickly is all you really need. So this would be good for some kind of you know, event applications or somewhere where you want business card application where you just want to send quick amounts of data to someone else. Cool. So the bump process consists of three different things. There's first off the configuration, where you set your API key, the delegate, and the UI delegate. Then there's the session. And so this is just requesting a session, handling a session, and also um, handling things like bumps, error, and disconnects that may occur when you're connecting to the bump server. And then finally, after that, there's cleaning up, and that involves ending the session. So those are the three things we'll just implement quickly now. So the setup and configuration, if you head back into the view controller header file, um, you need to conform the class to the two protocols, the bump API custom UI and the bump API delegate. And you also need to import bump API.h and bump API custom UI.h. Once that's done, you can then head into the implementation file. And in the view did load um, method, you add, first of all, a, a reference or an object that's referencing the bump API shared instance. Now, with the, the version one uh, of the bump API, you, could, you had to create the actual object itself, or the bump object. But this time around, you don't have to do that. So you just have to hook it up to this, this bump API shared instance. There can only be one at any time. If you uh, declare another one or alloc and init another one, who knows what will happen. But uh, basically, as long as you just reference this particular instance, then that's OK. Then you add your, or you, config, uh, you add your API key. Well, we have these configuration methods. And the first one is just adding your API key. The second one is uh, then referencing the delegate and also, or setting up the delegate, the UI delegate and the delegate. Calling these methods after the call to request start is undefined. So after we've done these configuration methods, we can then request uh, a session from the API. But doing these configurations before that, again, will we'll provide uh, who knows what will happen. It'll kind of be a bit messy. So once the configuration has been completed, we can then request uh, a session from the bump API object. And just one thing more we have to add here is that because we, we just want to make sure that the, the bump uh, or the simulator bump uh, button is only showing on the iPhone simulator, we simply add these th uh, three lines of code, which will remove the simulator button if it's running on an actual device. So we're just targeting the iPhone simulator for this particular button. Cool. And then we start implementing the bump API methods. So there's just a number of API methods which you need to implement in your um, project to get it up and running. I'll go through these relatively quickly, um, just to give you a bit of an overview. But for these, as long as you've got the bump API and you've conformed to the, or you've, you've added a, a reference to the delegate, then it'll ask you to implement these particular methods. 
So we've got the, first of all, the bump request session called. Um, and this basically updates the user and lets them know that uh, they're, they're requesting a session from the bump server and they're wanting to then bump. If this session fails, we need to implement the bump failed to connect to bump network. These, these methods are going to get very long and very exciting, uh, especially as I read them out. Um, but yes, bear with me. So bump failed to connect to bump network. Um, so that's just updating the user and letting them know that we've failed to connect to the bump network for some reason. And if that happens, we can then request another uh, session with the, uh, with the server uh, from the, the bump API shared instance. Um, once the session has connected, it'll let us know via this method. So using bump connected to bump network method, we can then set the text of the label to saying, yes, you're ready to bump away. So you can let the user know that they're ready to bump with someone else. After that, if the bump end session is called, then we just let the user know that this, at the end session uh, method was called, and we also can log this just to know if, if this was meant to happen on purpose or if it was not. If the network was lost, then we can let them know. So we, we're going to retry and, and try and gain access to the network again using the bump network lost method. Using the bump occurred method is where we find out that a bump actually occurred from a particular user. Then we can attempt to connect to the other person. So this is when the, the bump occurs, and we're going to try and match the two users together. If the match doesn't work and it fails, then we have the bump match failed, and it provides a reason as well as to why it failed. So then, in this sense, we, we just basically let the user know that the, the match has failed and that they should try again. Then after that, if we do manage to match the two users together, we get the bump matched uh, method. And for this, we can set the text as to being matched. And then from there, we can confirm that we, these two were, were supposed to match together. And so what this means now is generally with your application, you'll ask people if they want to connect to a particular person. In this case, we're not doing that. We're just confirming it because it's a simple application. But once we've, done, we've confirmed that this is the person we want to connect to, we can then start transferring data. Great. So using this bump session start, oh, sorry. Uh, and then also there's the bump session started method. So that's once it's started, we can let the user know. Then with the bump session started with method, we can then start selecting information or data that we want to transfer to the other person. So for this, we just simply need any data that we, we want to transfer. We can uh, set it up as an object and archive it as an NS data object. And this can then just be sent across by using the method send data. So we can send anything across we want to across using uh, this bump API as long as we we set it up as a NS data object. If the session fails, then we, we have the bump session failed to start method. And that's, that's basically handling that with a particular reason. Uh, and with the data received, so oh, sorry, then the bump session ended method. So when the bump session ended, we, we call this method and we let the user know that it has ended and that we want to request a new one. So because we're, when we match together, we're just transferring a little bit of information and then we want to you know, set it up again so we can keep bumping together, we then um, basically can set up another session over and over again. We're getting there. There's a lot of sessions, a lot of methods to implement, but uh, you kind of get the idea of it. Finally, so one of the last ones is that we want to handle the data that's coming through from the other person. So for this, we simply use a bump data received method. And from this, we take the information that we received from the other person, we unarchive it. So as long as we know what the data was first archived as, so whether it's an integer, whether it was an array, whether it was some kind of dictionary, we can then un unarchive it and uh, create some kind of uh, you know, uh, value from it. So for this, we create an integer and we find out what the opponent sent us across. And then we create or we find out what our option is. So this is uh, implemented exactly the same on both uh, person's programs. And so it'll, it'll take the information and run it in both a similar way. Cool. Then we have a little bit of logic, which then checks each other's uh, value to, uh, to the other persons. And so we can see whether we've, have, we, you know, we've got the same value, so therefore it's a draw, whether we have, um, we've beat the opponent or whether we lose to the opponent. And then with that, we can then present an alert view message, and we can then increment the score uh, in the label. And then once all that's done, we can then end the session because we don't want to transfer any other information to the other user. Great, so that's basically it. How did everyone go? Did you manage to get through that? Yeah, a little bit. Does anyone want to bump and, uh, does anyone want to build and run? And Yeah? You've got it going? Good, good. Do you want to bump with someone else around you? What's that? Yeah, so you can bump with two simulators as well.
Does someone want to try it? Yeah? yeah? You're going to do a countdown as well. Who wants to bump? Three, two, one. That's okay. I'll let, I'll let you play with it after anyway. Um, so there's one more thing that you want to handle, and that is multitasking. So when the app goes into the background or comes back into the foreground, it's really simple to, to handle this kind of stuff with the bump. So in the app delegate file, all you need to do is add two lines. Uh, and the first one is in the did enter background method, you just basically end the session uh, for the bump API. And so that just ends it, and then you can restart it again when you enter the foreground. So uh, you just request a new session from the bump API object. Yes? Yes. So, yeah, you, it, yeah, it uses location through Wi-Fi on the simulator. Yeah, and that's basically it. So if anyone wants to try bumping with each other, you can. I don't, how many of you actually implemented it? I'm unimpressed. Where, where, where's all your coding skills? This is really sad. I, I thought we were going to have a fun interactive session. No, it still was fun. So if anyone wants to try bumping with anyone, I've got the iPhone up here as well. Um, but basically, I just wanted to give you an overview of the bump API, the, couple of, the different uses that we had for it. So you saw you know, applications can really easily add it uh, and have it for things like those PayPal, uh, the other ones there as well. And it's really easy to add to your application. So if you've got something where you're just sending contact information from one person to the other, or if you want to you know, create a local multiplayer game, Think about using the Bump API as a way in which to instantiate or, to, or no, to create these basically connections between the two. Yeah, so there's a couple of Bump-related links there. Uh, obviously, bu.mp for the website and API resources. Uh, they've used Oxygen to, uh, you know, to provide documentation for all of their, their API, which you can check out via the API resources as well. If you want to contact me and ask me any questions, uh, feel free to do. My Twitter is zefcan. And my email is z.fitz-walter at qt.edu.au.